Hey Jarvis, turn on the bedroom lights. Turned on the lights. Quick update regarding the Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition. For now, I've been able to create like a very basic voice assistant, but what you have to keep in mind is that this device is merely just a microphone and a speaker. It all comes down to how Home Assistant handles it and now you create your voice assistant. Basically, you go and create your own voice assistant by going here and by creating an assistant by clicking here. And then you need three components. The first one is the speech to text, is that when you actually say the command, it needs to transcribe it into text. For this, you have a couple of options. You can go and start a subscription on the Home Assistant Cloud, which is gonna take care of all the three components, conversation agent, speech to text, and text to speech. Or you can go local, and then you have multiple options. The main two options are actually add-ons that you can just install, it's plug and play. You have speech to phrase for low-end devices, for example, if you're running Home Assistant on Raspberry Pi, and Whisper if you're having your Home Assistant instance on a mini PC or NAS. I run Whisper on my Synology NAS, which is not very powerful at all. And as you can see, it manages to transcribe my turn on the bedroom lights command in about three seconds, which is honestly not that bad. I could have optimized those times and maybe go under the one second if I used the speech to phrase add-on. But the only problem is that is that it only gonna transcribe what it knows. So if you wanna do then AI pro processing, AI personality and stuff like that, you can't really do that with speech to phrase. Then the conversation agent, which is like the intelligence that's gonna process your actual command that you can even try by yourself by using your phone or even by going here on your home assistant dashboard and you can directly talk to your home assistant uh, intelligence. But like you have to keep in mind that it's very basic. For now, in fact, I kept it to home assistant before actually putting some sort of AI. As you can see here, you have the options to directly about ChatGPT. Then again, you have multiple options. If you don't want to keep the basic home assistant intelligence, you can probably connect most of the top AIs of the moment. But of course, you wouldn't be local at all. You would just send your commands to the AI cloud. The good thing about that is that it's going to be super fast and the downside is that it's going to cost you money. I haven't tried yet, so I can't really tell you how much it costs on a real life daily basis. But once again, the beautiful thing about my system is that it leaves you a lot of options. You can even host your own AI on your server or on another computer and have my system talk to it through a software that is called Olama. For example, you could run the local version of DeepSeek and make it your own conversation agent. I wanted to do that at first, but I realized that the DeepSeek local agent weights 400 gigabytes and my Mac mini isn't ready for that yet. And finally, the final component, which is probably the easiest one, is the text to speech. And you can use the base option, which is Piper, an add-on made for Home Assistant. But again, it's also something that you can absolutely customize to make it sound how you like. So it's really great. You can make it like whatever you want. It all comes down to what you can do, what, how much time you want to dedicate to it. But what I can tell you is that in one hour, you can already have something that is equivalent to Alexa.